Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. Some of you have asked me to play as the Soviet Union and take you through the paranoia mechanics. Sure, I could do that, but just doing that is not really enough for a video, is it? I'm also going to dominate the world. Everyone gets to starve under Joseph. Let's get going. Regular difficulty, Ironman mode, historical focuses, like usual. And here we are. Dominating the world as the Soviet Union means I want to defeat every other major nation. And possibly China too. So we have Japan. Japan. Japan will pretty much occupy itself with China for a long time. Then we have Italy and France who are minor concerns and will just be swept away on the way to victory. And then we have Germany, the United Kingdom and the United States who will be the real problems. Now there are two good ways to go about this. First, we expand a little bit and we crush Germany the moment they attack uh, the Allies. This way we should be able to defeat and annex them easily. Then use their immense industry to boost ourselves enough to defeat the Allies. Alternatively, if you don't want to be dealing with a lot of difficult navy stuff late game, we might want to take out the Allies early and then fight Germany. I prefer the route where you take out the Allies early. Now, as the Soviet Union, we would have a difficult time navally invading Britain unless we get lucky. We could theoretically just go straight here and defeat Britain that way, but it would depend on luck too much for my taste. So instead, we will have to expand our fleet and then team up with Germany and Italy to invade them. That's gonna take some getting used to. That's gonna take some preparation. Also, I'm supposed to deal with Stalin's paranoia and the easiest way to deal with Stalin's paranoia is to be Stalin, because then he can't purge you. Path of Marxism Leninism. Here we go. As the Soviet Union, we have the biggest army at the start. It's not very strong because we have some negative modifiers like this one, but it's good enough. Now let's switch all the cavalry to infantry, keep the mountaineers and say half the tanks switch to infantry, because I'm not going to be producing tanks so we can just uh, use them on reserves. Now production. I'm going to need some support equipment, some artillery, no tanks, one factory on trucks, cancel the planes, and one factory on trains. This should suffice and the rest go on infantry equipment. As for the ships, I want to finish the ones that are building, but no more than that. We will need convoys too, and I will need them soon. Let's say three dockyards on convoys immediately, and once you're done with the rest of the ships, just do convoys. Next up, start a spy agency. Research will be generic, construction, production, and electronics and get me some more civilian factories first infrastructure here here and here and sieves Okay, speed up, unpause. We will soon be attacking some people, but there are multiple good options, so I'm not yet sure who we should attack. Cryptology department. We've done Path of Marxism Leninism, and now we should go the center route. But first, I want to do NKVD primacy, so we can start justifying war goals quickly and early. So addressing internal affairs it is. Oh, also let's get our entire fleet and get everybody into Leningrad. Also, here's an admiral for you. And make sure all the ships I'm building actually deploy to already existing units so I don't end up with them scattered around um, the world. Because we have ports pretty much everywhere. Doesn't really matter which that it's an existing one. Then they'll be deploying where the fleet is. Oh, and exercise these guys. First spy is gonna be Kim. Kim is going to the United Kingdom. Turkey. Let's uh, oppose them so we can get extra war support. And they'll probably back down. They do. We get war support. And now NKVD primacy. Now this will actually cost us 20 paranoia because paranoia will activate before we can finish this focus, sadly. But it's still worth it. Also, started decrypting the United Kingdom. There's a Stalin concerned about factionalism. Sadly, I cannot delay this for two weeks just to make sure it's not active, because it activated even before I click this. See, it's already growing. Mechanical computing. And pause as soon as NKVD primacy is done. Why? Because now we need to make a difficult decision. Who do we attack? Because I can attack up to two countries if they're not too big before starting the big wars without the Allies interfering, because they need, I think, 25% world tension to start guaranteeing people. So what do we want? We could attack Yugoslavia, that would put us at war with Romania, Czechoslovakia and France as well. But at this point we don't want to fight France. We could attack Poland to get better access to Germany, but we'll get half of it for free anyway. We could attack Turkey. Turkey is guaranteed by Romania and this way we could get Turkish stuff and Romanian stuff. And one of my goals is to steal their navies. So Turkey is a valid goal here. What else? Sweden. Why Sweden? Because they have a decently sized navy and we can easily navally invade them and conquer them or go through Finland. Similar for Norway and the Netherlands. The Netherlands are actually the most tempting target because they have the largest navy of the small countries that we can attack and justifying on them through their puppet doesn't generate a lot of world tension. But can I even uh, reach 
them. Let's see. Can I get over here? Looks like I can. Hmm. Or through the north, maybe. Maybe the Netherlands are a good option. They have a decent fleet, but mine's bigger. Hmm. It's a risk. It's a bit of a risk. But I think Netherlands might be the best choice. Netherlands and Turkey. This way, we would get Netherlands for their fleet, Romania and Turkey for their economy. And Turkey also has a decent sized fleet. Okay, then. I've made my decision. I think we'll have to do the trick with um, justifying the first war goal, then starting a second, and cancelling the first and restarting it, so they're both counted as a second war goal you justify, so they complete at the same time. But with NKVD, we do have shortened justification, so maybe if we just justify on two, they will finish an, in the time window of 60 days. Let's um, try and see. So first justification is on the Dutch East Indies, 120 days. Now we start another one on Turkey, 180 days. So that's 60 days exactly. Let's start justifying on them too. Now, if I am understanding this correctly, I will actually have one day in which I can declare both wars. If this is taking 120 and this is taking 180. Because we do the war goal, then we have 60 days until it expires. So we would, if I understand correctly, we would get the second war goal at the start of the day and then we would lose the first war goal at the end of the day. Uh, that can be tricky and we can make mistakes and all that. And we do have enough um, political power. So I'm just going to cancel the one on the Dutch East Indies and start it again. And now they're both the second war goal we're justifying and they'll both take 180 days. That's it. So we have half a year to prepare. Now that we have done NKVD primacy, let's do the center. Also, NKVD primacy has increased paranoia to 24%. So I'm going to forge satisfying production reports to keep it down. All right, that's a lot of work, isn't it? Now, if you don't like the idea of attacking the Netherlands, you might want to try Turkey and Sweden, especially since Sweden has uh, a guy that makes it more more difficult to justify the war goal, so you wouldn't have to do the trick. But Turkey and Sweden gives it just enough world tension to be on the brink of getting guarantees. Finland and Sweden is also a good option, or just Turkey and Romania, or Turkey, Romania, and someone smaller, like one of the Baltic countries. But they won't give you a lot of navy. Uh, the options are myriad, but I do like attacking the Netherlands. It gives us a good starting point for an invasion against the UK, and they have a huge navy, huge for such a small country. It's still very significant. Now, actually, taking out Sweden might be more advantageous to us because they do have lots of heavy ships compared to the Netherlands lighter ones, but the Dutch East Indies are another point in favor of attacking the Netherlands. Right, enough deliberating. Let's continue. So I can invade through the Baltic or I could try and invade all the way from here around Norway. Now think about it. Now stop this. Can you actually give me supremacy on, on the naval invasion support order or is that too far? I think I'll have to do patrols. Political paranoia can be a little bit scary, but you don't really have to worry about it too much. If you go over 25%, you will very often get a small purge event and then you can just sacrifice a general or some debuffs to bring it down again. Just uh, don't select the other option unless you absolutely have to. Now let's do radio for better decryptions, boost our decryption power and get a second spy. Let's get Richard uh, Soros, Sorge, send him to the UK as well. Soon we will be doing collaboration governments. Also next focus, the Stalin constitution. So he can constitutionally starve his own people. As the equipment, it's fine. I mostly need support equipment for the special operations and artillery for our units, of course. I will be boosting my templates later on, but we need to establish a better economy first. Let's prioritize garrisons and operations. And in occupied territories, we will be using liberated workers. It's quite powerful. And cavalry. Let's get up to five upgrades so we can have a third operative. We got one from NKVD Primacy. I'm going to need more stability for political power and factory output. Let's do improved worker conditions now. Now, it's important that you justify on the Dutch East Indies, not on the Netherlands directly. Why? Because the world tension is different. If the world tension gets to high, you get guarantees. And we don't like guarantees. Next up, the first great purge. Necessary evil, sadly. Well, necessary for Joseph to stay in power. Even looking at this picture kind of unsettles me. One of the most evil people in history. Oh, right, we have enough network to start a spy. Operation. Collaboration government, please. In the United Kingdom. Repeat comments when ready. Three of them, please. And we'll soon get another spy to maintain the network. Further upgrades can wait for now. And we are losing some advisors. Pity, but if you're playing as Stalin, you don't really get a choice in this. Now we have to wait 175 days to get this. And when we go all the way down to the block of rights and Trotskyists, we will be rid of the paranoia because he'll just have killed everyone. Now remember that increasing stability gives you political power and factory output. So while our paranoia is not that bad, I'm actually going to do the new Soviet woman for 
10% stability. These decisions are not that good. Embargo for Italy, sure. Extra stability. How much time do I have until I attack? Oh, not much time at all, and I'm not ready. Wait, wait, wait. We need to send troops there. I got carried away. All right, so uh, all the mountaineers will go to Turkey, supported by infantry. Yeah, I actually kind of slept on that, didn't I? Don't even have my invasion prepared. God damn it. It's fine. There's not enough world tension. We can uh, delay the attack a little bit. Not too much, though. So you guys go to Turkey. Now, who do we use for the naval invasion? I'm thinking the tanks, the motorized, and, of course, infantry. We'll go from Leningrad, it's closer, and start planning the naval invasions. All right, prepared. Now, the navy. Go on patrol, here, 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 and here. And the remaining 72 units will go after Romania. Because don't forget that Turkey is guaranteed by Romania. Put them all in an army group. Uh, Tuhachevsky is a good field marshal, but he'll get purged. So instead, let's promote Konstantin Rokosovsky and give him aggressive assault, uh, offensive doctrine, and charismatic. I actually promoted him a bit late. If I did that earlier, he wouldn't have a penalty. But I kind of got carried away in explaining stuff. Also, third spy, maintain the network here. Generals, our naval invasion is the most crucial. Let's give it to Zhukov. The mountaineers in Turkey will be led by Ivan Konyev and the remaining three just high-level guys. Alexander Vasilevsky, Vasily Kuznetsov, as well as Markian Popov. Because he's a brilliant strategist, we can make him into a field marshal later. So these three are actually going to paint a field marshal level order in Romania, but make sure to assign these three armies to it and make everybody aggressive. Because we're the Soviet Union, we don't care about casualties. Right, get in position everybody. I'm a bit late on that, but it's fine. We also do have an air force. Let's assign it all to Romania. You can have it. We'll move it to Turkey afterwards. Invasion still preparing and not in position, but I'm working on it. The Europe capitulates. World tension is at 17%, so we're safe from guarantees. New Soviet woman is done. Let's secure the administration for cheaper laws. And hire Mikhail Kalinin. 15% stability. That's pretty good, isn't it? How far are you from being in position, Mr. Zhukov? Looks like most of the units, if not all of them, that are assigned to the invasion order are in position. Good. We can start that in time. Almost all of them. One of the tanks is far. Which one? Oh, that's really far. Let's maybe replace you with someone else. Ah, whatever. I can say nine units just as well as ten. It should be enough for the Netherlands anyway. And we got our war goals. Are we ready? Not really, but I guess we're ready enough. Make sure we get into Turkey as well. Now, once again, I can delay this a little bit because there's not enough world tension for uh, guarantees. So I'll wait a little bit for my troops to organize better. But this is good enough, mostly. Yeah, I should have had them prepared a bit earlier. Regardless, we're ready now. Let's declare wars and do that simultaneously. Dutch East Indies and Turkey. And also Romania, who's guaranteeing Turkey. Let's see if our naval invasions launch. They do. The Netherlands do have a fleet, but mine's bigger. Now, Romania and Turkey will be relatively easy to beat, and our naval invasion of the Netherlands is on the way. It is a bit far. Now, theoretically, if you're lucky, you can do just the same thing to the UK and just invade them like that. They're very bad at defending the isles once you've landed. But can I actually land in the Netherlands? I can. Good. Let's take a tank or two and just drive around where it's not defended while we attack more. I need a port, please. You stop these guys from blocking my tanks. You attack here and you attack downwards. We still don't have a port, so we're operating on the supplies we've brought. But we're much stronger, so it should be fine. In the meantime, Romania and Turkey. This is fine. This is more difficult, but also fine. Once Romania is dealt with, I will redirect all the troops and the air force. They're defending themselves. Maybe I should focus on getting the port rather than trying to drive around them. And again, I'm almost done with this unit. Maybe I will drive around them. No, this is too risky. I don't want to jeopardize the whole invasion. I'm going back to get the port. One unit will keep pushing, but my tanks are going back. Because without the port, I cannot bring in reinforcements. And if I don't bring reinforcements, there's gonna be trouble. Come on, attack more. Then again, I'm about to take their capital. They'll cut me off, but it won't matter in a moment. Oh, can I get the hog? That's a port? No, I can't. This is also a distraction, so there's less defense here. I am willingly sacrificing this unit if it's necessary. In the meantime, Romania almost taken care of Turkey defending. And we got the port. Well, in that case, everybody get over here. Now hold the port. As long as we have it, they don't stand a chance. We're gonna lose this unit, sadly. Ah, it's fine. How's our paranoia? Pretty high, but it will go down with this. No purge events yet. Let's get Nikita Khrushchev for the extra political power. It's not a lot, but in the long term, it does add up. As you can see, we're making progress. The Netherlands are almost ours, and so is Romania. Turkey, more of a defense there. Take everything in Romania, and don't forget their fleet. Fleets are crucial in this plan. Now, the guys from Romania are going over to Turkey. We won't really have enough supply for all of them, but when has that ever mattered to the Soviet Union? In the meantime, Zhukov is in the Netherlands, having a nice time. Oh, did I forget to take a focus? God damn it, I always do this. Maybe not by much. Oh no, it just finished, so if we lost... How many lost days? Actually, 
Actually, we haven't lost any days because this, uh, we're exactly on the 10th day. It's fine. Let's do socialism in one country. Take the victory points and be done with it. And there go the Netherlands. Now, I wanted the Netherlands for their fleet, but let's also make sure to take everything. All the fleet, please. Because they do have a significant amount of ships. We have next the Netherlands. We have a good jumping off point for an invasion of the UK, as well as a good source of natural resources down here. Everybody just join uh, the Field Marshal Order. And Zhukov can come back home. And my navy can have a break. Also, I got this from Romania and this from the Netherlands. Nothing to scoff at. They're going to be useful. Now, Sweden would have been a better choice to get navy than the Netherlands, because they have heavier ships and a similar amount. But we do get the natural resources from the Dutch East Indies, and attacking Sweden would have generated a lot more world tension. Now, let's flood Turkey with our troops. Brazil enter state of emergency. Why? Now, 35 days until we can do Trotskyist center. So, let's do expand the agit prop. We're going to need this anyway for our propaganda missions. Campaigns, not missions. Propaganda campaigns, which will provide small bonuses for political power. Are we ready for war economy? Not yet. Need more war support. Conscription. Have a lot of people. I know what we can get. Professional officer call. And meticulous preparation. You guys doing well? Yeah. We're not getting that many factories from occupation right now, but with liberated workers, you actually do get quite a bit. Getting 12 from Romania, 5 from the Indies, and 8 from the Netherlands. Oh, and 1 from Suriname. Oh, right, I got that too. I have a foothold in America. Attacking the Netherlands is a very mm, flexible choice. We completed one collaboration government, another one is in preparation. And we've decrypted their cipher. Let's do the United States next. Are we almost done with Turkey? Almost. Come with me to Istanbul, play it Mr. Toot, and then we'll be done. I could do production reports, but we'll be doing another great purge after this. So I'm just gonna roll the dice and hope no purge event happens. The anti-Soviet Trotskyist Center. Also, we can do propaganda. Now, even if it's not something you need, it's um, it's worth doing because you need a certain amount of propaganda campaigns done to unlock uh, focuses later on. So every hit of a hammer hits the enemy. When I said come with me to Istanbul, I actually meant going to Istanbul. Do that. And they're done. Turkey is mine and their fleet. And this is pretty much how much you can get away with without starting a world war. Because if we try to take more, the Allies would do guarantees. Let's have a look at the navy we got from Turkey. That's pretty decent too. Merge everything into our main navy. Get them all to Leningrad. Actually, no, get them all to the Netherlands. That's a pretty good amount of ships. I'm going to use that to destroy the Allies. 141 ships. Our war support is big enough, so we can do war economy now. Let's do that. Now it's time to boost our troops a little. We do have the economy to do it, or we will soon. Now we guys just spread around my territory so we don't starve like the rest of our people and I can modify the template a little like adding recon and engineers and anti-air too I suppose we can reduce that because we now have two years of waiting. I could try and attack the UK now but I intend to do it in concert with the Germans so we can take advantage of their fleet. Let's save this modified template and start producing anti-air. Also when I'm done with these factories we'll start doing some military ones. Second Moscow trial, paranoia goes down and we lose even more advice. Next up, workers, dictatorship. How is the resistance acceptable? We actually inherited some of the compliance, and that was present in Kurdistan or Suriname. We need more military factories, don't we? Yeah. Well, let's get some infrastructure going. Maybe in places with a lot of steel, like here, or here, or here, and here. And then fill those with military factories. Second, collaboration government operation on the UK has launched. Disloyalty in the NKVD. Oh, that's unfortunate. I got my paranoia to hide, didn't I? So we can lose political power and paranoia, or get a worst NKVD guy. I guess I'll just get the worst NKVD guy. And Chiang Kai-shek arrested at Shang-Chi. This is an interesting development if you want to get involved in China, because if you kill him, then lots of stuff happens. But let's not mess with it. We have other priorities right now. He is still needed. Chinese United Front is not exercised yet. Gets exercised. And I do have some NKVD divisions in reserve. I do have military police. I suppose I could be using that too. Is that better for garrisons than cavalry? I don't think so. No, it is not. We're going to need more support equipment. Now, if you're feeling adventurous and want to risk stuff, you could try and do a naval invasion of the UK right now. And the fleet we have is substantial. 142 ships. If you get lucky and trick them a little bit, you can actually invade the UK with this. Uh, but I'm not going to risk it, and the extra time will let me make our armies better. Also, I'm actually going to change stuff here. I need to start researching the better naval invasion. This. So we can have this before we attack. We can't do the military conspiracy yet. as the paranoia? Not that great. So we can do one long focus and one short focus before we can start this. 
I'm going to do collectivist propaganda and risk a small purge. Also, switch to free trade for better research and hard transport. As the Soviet Union, we do suffer from terrible research. Also, um, I think the reformer survives the purges, so let's hire him so we can get more army experience. German Soviet treaty, that's fine, and they got Richard. No worries, we'll get him out. Oh, the second coalition government was 45% successful. Nice. Still need one more though. And let's get better decryption. Ah, a smaller purge event. Admiral Philip accused of treason. The admirals don't matter. You just need one fairly good admiral. I mean, unless you're doing role-playing with those. So, um, sorry. And I guess I'll forge satisfactory reports too. It's cheap. Our stability is gonna be wonderful. More decryption. Our factories are looking pretty good. Collectivist propaganda is done. Now a short focus. Collectivization process is a long one, so we'll lose that one. 70, 35. We could do consumer for more propaganda or invest in the army. Well, I will need to do those propaganda campaigns, but we also need to do desperate measures later on because our army is terrible. Mm, let's do the consumer. Operation complete. Now do the third collaboration government. No need to repeat after that. Military conspiracy time. Another great purge. Oh well. It's a short one, right? Yeah. This is a bit worrying, but 50 is not that terrible. If we get to 75, it's bad. And the military conspiracy will bring it down. New propaganda. I want research. Knowledge breaks the chains. And what else? I yield or builders of communism. Let's do builders of communism. Even more research. We need those landing crafts quickly. And more the logistics. We have enough artillery. We do not have enough support equipment or uh, anti-air. Let's decrease the amount of infantry weapons we're making. The allies form. Trial of the generals. Sad but unavoidable. Did any of my main generals get cowed by Stalin? I think I need to see it through here. None of them did. No. Good. Another paranoia. 38. Oh, the purge didn't really fix it, did it? Oh, let's behead the snake. This actually gives me operations to get rid of Trotsky in Mexico. And an operative slot. I don't really care about Trotsky. Joseph clearly does. Oh, I have three propaganda bits. I thought I only had two. Uh, let's do the high yield too. That helps with uh, consumer goods factories. Let's get Boris, the military theorist, and Alexander Vashevsky, the army regrouping expert. The last collaboration government is on the way. After that, we can move out of Britain. Oh no, we were not fast enough beheading the snake, and someone is accusing Zhukov. Semyon Timoshenko against Georgi Zhukov. Zhukov is my best general. I am using him. Semyon Timoshenko is army reformer expert. Oh. Alright, so this is actually pretty bad. I can lose this guy. And do I have anyone to replace him with? Not really. I could train a new one or use the drill specialist. It's not that good. Or I could lose my best general. I'm not using him as a theorist. But I am using him as a general. And he is pretty good. I think I'm gonna promote Markin Popov to a field marshal. Give him the offensive doctrine trait. And, oh, he needs to be level 4 for this, but he will be soon. I don't want to sacrifice Zhukov. I like him. Alternatively, I could just keep them both, which is gonna be bad. So let's get rid of Simon Timoshenko. It's a pity. But that's the risk you take if you don't, you know, take these decisions to reduce paranoia. We did behead the snake. I need to wait much longer. Let's do the collectivization process next. And we don't have a chief of army anymore. Do we have someone on level 4 who we could make into an offense specialist? Yes, Vasily Kuznetsov could be made into that. Let's promote him to a field marshal. He could be a commando specialist, or if I give him offensive doctrine, which is a good trait even for a general, he can be the army offense specialist, and we can hire him. I need 50 political power for that, though. We're done with the coalition governments on the United Kingdom. Shall we infiltrate their army as well? Yeah, why not? Spanish Civil War, almost done. Get that chief of army, offense specialist. 5% attack is useful. And if he gets to level 6, it will be 10%. And if he gets to level 8, it will be 15. Conspiracy in the academy, a minor purge event. Affects the air force. That's fine. I want to do improved competing machine, but I don't really have uh, the research slots to spend on that. So let's boost our infantry instead. Not decrypting anybody. Mm, I guess we can do France. Get uh, the Mexican guy. Go to Mexico itself. And we can start planning operations against uh, Trotsky. Only getting those military factories built. See, the paranoia is kind of getting out of hand. Conspiracy among civil servants. Oh, that one's bad. But we're almost done with it anyway. Centralization and discipline. See, we got unlucky by getting the more aggressive NKVD guy. Early. Oh, that's fine. We can decrease our paranoia by 20 and sacrifice some political power, or increase by 10 and also sacrifice some political power. Yeah, we'll decrease it, but let's uh, let the paranoia tick up a bit so it doesn't go to waste. All right? Root out the conspirators. Anschluss of Austria happened, not my problem. And let's. We get the better guns now. It's a bit ahead of time, but it's worth it, yes. Right, I don't need all those spies in the UK anymore. I do have an infiltrated army and a coalition government ready. 
So let's move them out. George and Elon can go to the United States. And we can do a subtle assassination of Trotsky. Risky. Alternatively, we can just raid the villa, which is more risky. Yeah, Ramon can try and kill Trotsky. Automatically repeat if he survives. And let's move Elon to Mexico so he can support that. How's the paranoia? Very manageable. We need a short focus before we can finish the purges. This is a long one. Finally time to modernize the army. I'm going to need way more artillery soon. Let's increase production. I could use another spy. Now let's do some of these campaigns. I don't need them, but I need to have completed a certain amount of these campaigns to unlock stuff down here. And it's finally time for the block of rights and Trotskyists. When we do this, there will be no more paranoia. Should I get another army group or make my units stronger? I think just strengthening them for now will be sufficient. Now, if I wanted to add a line artillery, will I have enough? No, not yet. More military factories, please. Transport is the sibling of the Red Army. Sure. 17 days. Is it worth forging production reports to avoid another purge before the greatest purge? Probably not. Let's do some radio propaganda instead. I think I have upgraded our spy agency enough. This should suffice. Third Moscow trial and oh, we do lose some people. Now I can get rid of the NKVD guy, increasing our stability, finally, and we no longer have the paranoia mechanic. Yay! No more purges. So what's next? Stalin's cult of personality is pretty powerful, but we're not ready for that yet. We could boost our science, which is pretty bad, or or go down this path to stabilize our country further. Alternatively, we could do Comintern, which lets us do, you know, political stuff. But this is not urgent. Also, we can start doing rehabilitated military now. The military stuff is mostly hidden behind this, which requires us to fight a major. So I think what I'm going to do is actually go towards the USSR Academy of Science so we can get another research slot. With that, we're going to need heavy industry infrastructure effort, which won't really do much in the grand scheme of things. Oh, we can improve work conditions again. Again. Yeah, let's do that. That will bring our base stability over 100%. Sorry, not base stability. Base stability is 90. Effective stability is 100. It's still going to increase, right? Even, yes, it's still increasing. Why do I want it higher? Well, because then if we go to war, stability drops, but ours will still be high. Let's do more industry. I really need this landing craft so we can land in the UK quickly and subjugate it before the Germans can defeat France. Also, the Germans will have a difficult time defeating France before we deal with the Brits because we have taken the Netherlands. So we'll need a lot of steel. Here's if you boost infrastructure in provinces with resources, you get more of these resources. I'm mostly concerned about steel with my playstyle, so I'm looking for provinces with steel, boost infrastructure there, and then build factories. He would make a good field marshal, wouldn't he? Now, nah. our expert for Zhukov. Munich agreement, not my problem. We finish the five-year plan, eventually. Do we have anyone to decrypt? Oh, UK. Let's get the next doctrine. I'm kind of tempted to switch to grand battle plan, but uh, pocket defense will actually help us with naval invasions quite a bit. I could be starting a collaboration government in the United States by now. Collaboration government, oh, not on Mexico though, on the United States. Richard Sorge and Elon, go do that. Commands when ready, auto-repeat and all that. It won't manage to auto-repeat because I won't have a guy building a network here, but at least I'll get a notification that it's done and couldn't auto repeat. I'm playing this safe now. I could be invading the UK now, but it would be a risky endeavor. I'm choosing to wait until they're fighting the Axis. National specialists. And again, maybe foreign experts is better. We get cheaper industrial concern. This 20% uh, total research speed and boosts. And this is just uh, faster construction. Now let's go with national specialists. Finally, better guns. There we go. And I'm out of steel because I'm on free trade. It's kind of funny that we produce the most steel, but free trade gives boosts to research, so it's worth it. Let's buy some. Why not? I can't afford to. And I think I have enough artillery. Yay, we managed to deal with Trotsky. Now, does it actually do anything for me, or is this just a role-playing thing? Regardless, I don't need a spy network in Mexico anymore. You guys move to the United States. I get a boost. I unlock a focus or something. Maybe it would have affected the paranoia, but we're done with the paranoia. Well, no matter. Let's get another research boost. And young builders of communism. I know it's expensive and high yield, but for these focuses down here, we need a certain amount of Propaganda campaigns done. Like for Father of Nations, we need 20. Stalin's cult of personality, please. And industrial concern. Almost done with the landing crafts. We can start planning invasions then. Cult of personality is done. Do we go for the research slot now? Or do we go to the cult of personality stuff? Okay, these are good. The research slot can wait a bit. Inheritor of the mantle of Lenin. And we got a new campaign.
campaigns available. You're good, but we don't have any slots at the moment. Let's add our line artillery to our main infantry unit. We do have enough. Maybe modify the mountaineers. Can we do that? Can I give you anti air and recon? Yeah, let's do that. I'm still using some of the mountaineers. You know what? Let's invest in research. Japanese provocation. I don't care. I really don't care. It's gonna force me into a border war, isn't it? It's gonna mess up my units. Agent captured. Unfortunate. But landing craft done. Very fortunate. All right, let's move you to the UK for a moment and rescue captured operative. Now oh, it's March 39. It's not that long until we have to fight the war. Oh, right. I gave you artillery. You're not trained up, are you? Nope. Well, you can train in a moment. Now I can send up to 30 units on naval invasions. So let's do just that. But first, get myself all the humbers and then we can plan our invasions. Just a couple. Time for some excavation. We have good reserves of everything. Border war. I hate border wars. Develop the order. Oh, these are pretty good. Production output 10%. Production efficiency cap 10%. Production output cost minus 10%. We need to match tank and material plans for that. Interesting. Agent captured and we finished our first collaboration government. Yeah, I had to move my guys elsewhere. The Japanese win. I don't care. Academy of Sciences. We have five floating harbors in reserve. Now rescue our US operative. A concealment expert will be nice. And maybe an amphibious assault expert too. Yeah, sure. Time to start planning the naval invasions. We have five uh, floating harbors. So it's going to be five orders, six units each in close proximity to, but not limited to uh, the enemy ports. I think I messed something up with some of the orders. Well, yeah, I did mess it up. Must have cancelled one of the orders. That's why. That's better. I want to capitulate the UK as fast as possible, so I'm going to send four full armies there. And one army will be dealing with the Polish border. This should do it. I could probably be deploying another army group right now. Maybe we should add a line entire air. Yeah, I can do that. If I added another artillery, we could do that too. Yeah, that's pretty strong, isn't it? Sure, let's do it. Italy joins the Axis. All of it been drop pact. Evil, isn't it? Another partition of Poland. But yes, we do sign the pact. Now we want to attack the Allies in September. 65 days for just a straight up attack on the UK. So let's wait a little. I had a bit of a break and I've reconsidered some things and I'm changing my plans. First off, I'm not going to attack the UK directly. We're going to attack Belgium. Why Belgium? This way we will limit the Germans' ability to get war score in this war and open a way for ourselves to France. One army can be assigned to that, while we sent three to the UK and one to the border of Poland. So that being the case, is it time to justify on them yet? Yes, it will take us 65 days to justify this and then we can time the declaration with the Germans getting involved in the war against the Allies. There we go. They will almost certainly get guaranteed by the Allies. Do we have anyone else to decrypt at the moment? Not really. I guess I can start working on Germany. As for doctrines, I kind of want to switch to Grand Battle Plan, but we don't have the army experience there for that at the moment. Motor of Ribbentrop will give me half of Poland. And they're inevitably conquered. We question the motives of Belgium. Have you been guaranteed yet? Yes, you have. Good. See, we've already taken the Netherlands. Now we take Belgium too. That should block uh, the Germans from easily getting war score against the French. Research our one weak spot. We'll get better in a moment. Now, you guys are going to support naval invasions here, here and here. Now, if I just attack the UK right now, they would have naval superiority, but I'm hoping that when the Germans get involved, the German Navy and the Italian Navy too uh, will be enough so that we can launch any naval invasions without trouble. You guys are going to help me with air superiority in the English Channel and then help against the British. I need to do the focuses to unlock this guy. Oh, and we haven't done any propaganda. Let's do under leadership of Stalin. Yeah, actually, we'll leave the others uh, till we declare war. And let's get those steel mills. Academy of Science is done. Let's do National Academies of Science. Get some more science boosts. And we're up to four slots. Let's boost our infantry. We're fine on logistics. And I could start deploying another army right now, actually. But um, I don't need it at the moment. We'll do it after this war. I also need to research some more support companies. But this is pretty good, right? One entire air, two artilleries. You should add another infantry. No, it's fine. Tell you what, we have a lot of political power. And I don't know when I'm going to do the Patriarch of All Russia. Because I want this guy, but he requires me to do three more focuses. So let's get the captain of industry for now. I'm now focusing on military industry. That's fine. Give me another the collaboration government on the United States. The execution can wait until we have our spies back. Justification on Belgium is complete. It's valid until October. I want to declare war at the moment that the Germans are fighting the Allies. One refuses German ultimatum. Do you attack yet? You have now attacked. So we're mostly ready to attack Belgium. Let's wait a few days so the German fleets can get into action. Now I'm expecting the German fleets are 
all over here and have the Italians joined. The Italians have not joined yet, but that's fine. Now, if my predictions and all that are correct, when I declare war on Belgium, I should be able to launch my naval invasions against Britain because my fleets are giving me supremacy here, of course, and there's some Belgian fleets, but the moment the UK joins, this will go up, but also that the Germans will be uh, helping with that. We're at war now, can we? Oh no, I need to wait for a major. We'll do this in a moment. Have your plan disrupted? Oh, whatever. And the UK has been called in. Right, supremacy. We're almost enough in the English Channel, but we do have enough up north. It's fine. It's enough that one of these two avenues is available. I can just redirect everything to a port that we capture. Now that we're at war with the major, let's do desperate measures. And they will be shuffling their stuff around. I might uh, launch the naval invasions in the English Channel too. See, now the uh, Brits have moved their navies here a little bit. Make sure to only engage if you're winning like this. And the invasions have been paused, theoretically, but in practice, the ones that have already launched are on their way. And that should be just enough. And we're getting into Belgium. And all of my invasions have now launched because the Brits have decreased their supremacy. Or have I increased mine? Doesn't matter. What matters is that now all my invasions are a go. And we have a collaboration option in the UK, which should let me create a collaboration government before the end of the war. France is now involved. We're getting into Belgium and we have landed in the UK. Get over here. Get me all the victory points. We now have ports. So everyone who's not assigned yet, get over here. And attack them aggressively. And for you, go down to Dover. Of course, named after the famous explorer Benjamin Dover. Ben for short. Okay. Oh, right. Cyphers. UK cipher. A bit late for that. But it's never a problem to actually take over the UK once you've landed. Landing is the difficult part. Oh, Elon has been freed. Let's make sure he's doing his part here. And collaboration government will involve Richard and Elon. All good? Yeah. I wanted to send three armies to the UK, but honestly, two will be more than sufficient. They have hardly any troops in here. Belgium capitulates. Good. See, I wanted to send these guys to the United Kingdom as well, but there's just no need, it looks like. I can always send them as reinforcements later. Once we take London, they should capitulate. Um, but I would rather get more war score before that, so just walk around and get all the other territories. Birmingham, yeah, don't forget people, Chester, and it's time to get into France. Now, I have taken over the Netherlands and Belgium, so the Germans have no avenue of attack and they're getting no war score. Now, since we are already fighting, oh, did Poland not join the war against me? 30 days. You know, it doesn't really matter. I'll get half of it anyway in mode of Ribbentrop. Then again, that can give me a little bit more war score in the peace conference. Let's do that. If they last that long. Britain slowly falling to communism. And now the United Kingdom has capitulated. Take London. Take this bit. And we've got dockyards. Why do we get all the dockyards? Well, because we have 100% collaboration in the UK, which means I get most of their factories and dockyards. Let me see. Where is it? 41% only. Wait, should be more. Maybe it'll update in a moment. Bond has been called in, so we don't need to justify anymore. Now we'll leave Ivan Konyev to guard the United Kingdom. I don't want any pesky naval invasions to disrupt my plans. Just guard the ports. And Zhukov can move over and destroy France for me. I will be redoing these orders soon. Provisional government of the United Kingdom. This is actually very beneficial if we do this. Why? Because Germany somehow has 57% participation, so they could try and get a lot in the peace deal. Well, they did fight Poland, but I just capitulated the UK, so in my opinion, I should get a lot more. It did cause more in land combat damage, so kind of makes sense. I'm gonna take France, that will increase my war score still. Uh, there's gonna be a back and forth at the peace conference. Now, if I actually click this and create a collaboration government in the UK right now, I will technically own this land, and it can't be taken from me at the peace conference. So we shall do that once we secure our domination of the Isles. Like this. We own everything here. They have our blessing. Create a collaboration government of the United Kingdom. Oh, and the factory is updated. We now have 94% of their industry, which I would like to keep rather than make them a collaboration government. And 125% of the resources. Whoa. Uh, where was I? Yeah, I would like to keep that. However, if we make them a collaboration government this way, we won't have to pay for it in the peace conference. So it's worth it. They have our blessing. British Soviet Socialist Republic. Now I am missing some steel, but I can get it on the cheap from my new British puppet once everything updates here. Right, um, let's actually get rid of all these orders here and get military access from Germany. I'm not going to be doing any Order 66 stuff. They patched that anyway. I mean, there's still two ways you can do it, but it's a lot of work. Instead, I'll just get military access for the purpose of military access and do a field marshal level order to take out France quickly. And use the French cipher, please. German pressure towards the Benelux. Well, I'm first. Well, Warsaw, as expected, Poland capitulates. Can I now justify more war goals? Still technically justifying on Poland, really? Would it cancel itself? It doesn't. Let's let it continue then. The war will be over once we're done with France anyway. Our industry went down a bit with the coalition government, fall of Paris, and we have 47% with the Germans having 52. So we are in 
a disadvantageous position. Also, Molotov or Ribbentrop will still be in effect, so let's uh, let them take this. Now, the thing is, we already did get all of the British Isles, well, with small exceptions, to our puppet. Let's feed them the rest of their cores. That means I don't have to pay for this, which leaves me a lot of room to maneuver. Now, I am going to take Canada. This is the best thing you can do here, because this gives you access to the United States easily. We'll leave Poland for Germany. I kind of want to take France, but it's not really that high a priority for me. I can always take it later when I kill Germany, which we will inevitably have to do. What I do want is strategic access all over the world. Let's take all the colonial possessions that we can. Oh, let's take Singapore. All that rubber. Secure access to China. This we can leave because Japan will be wanting it. Bits over here. Just, you know, low-cost stuff that gives us access all over the world. This bit next to Liberia, so we can take Liberia. And oh, definitely Gibraltar. And we're out of score. Do I even want to fight that? I wanted to take the Pyrenees so we can access Spain easily. Let's try and fight for this bit. We did get Canada and all the important strategic bits we wanted, so that's good. Let's focus on unclaimed stuff. Smaller bits all over the world. I don't mind border gore because everything is going to fall to communism, one way or another. But what are you contesting? You want Casablanca? Oh, Adolf, you romantic you. You're contesting North Ireland. Do I care about New Zealand enough to contest that? Probably not. Let's forfeit that. Same with New South Wales. Yeah, that too. And Casablanca and Marrakesh we can leave. We do want the Pyrenees so we can access uh, Spain. Leave Poland, leave France, at least continental France. Let's continue with the UK and unclaimed bits. We pretty much got everything we wanted already. Also need to get uh, some fleets, but that can wait for the last round. Right, so that accounts for everything of uh, pretty much everything except the Raj, which is very expensive. Why is it so expensive? It's not worth it. I mean, this I understand for all the tungsten, but this bit here, Delhi, almost no factories, very, very pricey. Let's take these two. Both strategic and resource rich. All right, what do you want? I'm keeping the Pyrenees. The rest I don't really care about. Now I'm going to basically let them take what they want from now on, because I don't want any of the countries surviving this, so I can sacrifice some territory to the Germans, if that means there will be no surviving countries. So to be sure, everything is claimed by someone, even if it's not me. Right, everything is claimed. I could try and fight for these bits, but I don't really care about them now. I can spend the rest of my score on ships. But first, let's uh, keep contesting the Pyrenees until they run out of points. Good. Now, the ships. I don't have enough score for all the ships, I think. So we're going to take all the smaller fleets, and then you take at least one ship from each enemy. This way, you get one big ship, and if nobody else took a big ship, you get all the small ones too. Now that that is secured, we can spend the rest of our score and get more big ships. And we're out of score, that's fine. These ships will be scuttled, that's okay. Our fleet will now be the largest in the world. We should have the United States beat with this. Have a look at the world. Soviet Union everywhere, in glorious border gore, which I love. Now, it's time to invade the United States. I do have my collaboration governments there working. One is done, the second will be starting soon. I got delayed a little bit by uh, my agents getting captured. Now we have to do two things. Invade the United States before they get strong, and prepare another army to defend against a German attack that will be coming. I could also just justify war goals and take out some countries. In the meantime, our logistics are fine, could be better, but we now have a very powerful industry having taken over all that we've taken over. Would be better if we kept the Britain, but this way I don't have to pay for Britain. And I can use their um, manpower if I want to. Now look at this fleet. That's what? About 500 ships. We're now the naval superpower of the world. I could probably navally invade the United States if I wanted to. Of course, there's no need for that, because we've conquered Canada. All of you guys, repair in London. You can use all the dockers for repairs now. now. I need some steel. Fortunately, we have a wonderful puppet, British Soviet Socialist Republic, our collaboration government, that will give us the steel almost for free. And we can keep being on free trade. Uh, I made a mistake. I should have made a copy of this template before I modified it. I think I want to go to three full army groups. Let's duplicate the NKVD division, remove the military police and exchange it for support artillery, and add more infantry battalions. Yeah, let's go to a 20 width. This is going to be a basic infantry template that I'm going to be deploying. Then we will be switching it to the more efficient one that we've created. This way we can gradually switch them without actually going into equipment deficits, or too much of equipment deficits. I want 240 of these, so let's do 80 three times. Yeah, that'll do. I actually do have 18 in the field, so we can reduce that to 74. Oh, as I was saying, time to invade the United States. Half an army group going from here, second half of the army group going from here. And let's use this guy to set up armies that we will be reinforcing later. Three full army groups. Assign the field marshals. Fortunately, we have tons of generals. That will not really be a problem. Now, who do we justify on the United States? Or maybe Mexico? Just 45 days. Huh. Let's switch you guys to the proper template. It's just eight, but you should be able to go here. Oh, and I also need to do a 
last cut and eight. Now the real question is, do we just go after them right now or do we wait for collaboration governments to be done? Oh, let's also send Richard to Germany. I forgot to do propaganda campaigns when we were at war. Pity. Oh, compliance growth. Let's do that one. Something cheap. Construction speed. Sure, that will do. This, cancel, this will cancel if requirements are not met. No, just need one more day of war. Oh, come on. Finish, finish. Is this finished? Crap. I was 35 days, uh, 34 days in out of 35. Oh, I should have delayed the attack a bit. Oh, well. Let's do freedom of debate, unity of action. Now, Academy of Science. What do we have here? Ah, this is a cumulative boost to our research speed for building academies all over our territory. Cool. Now, it's pretty expensive in terms of political power, but it's uh, actually good. All right. Let's build a Georgian National Academy of Science. We'll build a lot of those. I think I'm going to delay the conquest of the United States a little bit, so our collaboration governments can actually take effect. Kind of messed up with them. I didn't uh, push those enough. We just have one, and the other is just about to start. But I will be sending my guys there already, so they can prepare. Let's justify on Estonia and on Latvia. I don't have enough political power to do Lithuania too. No matter. I know I sent my good army to the United States, but I'm be I'll be deploying more troops soon. Germany honors the pact. We got Polish territory. Thank you, Germany. So one army goes here. Also, everybody be aggressive. Another army goes here. One justification ready. Let's wait for them to get in position. We've been embargoed by the United States. Oh, joy. Declare war on Estonia. Get ready to attack Lithuania. Justification Latvia is done. Declare war. Justify on Lithuania. Should we do Finland next? Mm, maybe. Though they do have those uh, pesky bonuses to defense. Hungary is justifying on Germany here. Yeah, good luck with that. Who else should we attack? How about Ireland? I'll wait. First we attack Lithuania, then we'll do Ireland. Yeah, maybe I should be using my good army for this, but uh, I want them in position for the United States. Infrastructure, please. And military industry. Maybe I should switch you to a better template. Will I have enough stuff? I do, actually. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, no, they're fighting already, but in some downtime they'll switch. How about you? I switch you too? Yes. And you? You as well. Actually, probably not delivered to the first two yet. Let's wait a moment. Oh, I'm out of manpower. I didn't realize that. No matter. Limited conscription. Another justification ready. Who do we attack next? Yeah, let's do Ireland. And Afghanistan. Oh, you have a guy that makes it more difficult. No Afghanistan then. Iran. Not enough political power. That's fine. Decrypt Italy. Let's pretend that Stalin is a brilliant genius. And declare war on Lithuania. Hmm. Expeditionary forces. No, thank you. Oh, justification on Ireland is ready and my troops are not. Yeah, I thought they would defeat Estonia faster. But I am using reserve troops, so kind of makes sense. It is going difficult. Um, yeah, I'm making a mistake just keeping these guys over in the United States. They're my best troops. They should be in the field fighting. If we're delaying the United States, let them fight elsewhere. You're invading Ireland. You are invading Spain for me. We can always get back to the United States later. Justify on Spain. Although they are fascist. If they join the Axis, that would be a problem. Not Spain then. Yugoslavia. Still not done with Estonia, really. Germany declared war on Luxembourg. Well, finally. Luxembourg capitulates and so should Estonia. Yep. Give me everything, of course. My only puppet is the British and that was out of necessity. Germany attacked Hungary. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. So Germany was justifying against Hungary, not the other way around. Whatever. Luxembourg. And next. Need some more propaganda. We can't get great commander yet, but we'll need a leader of the party and the people for that. So let's do the leader thing. Our first troops have arrived in Ireland. Lithuania. Annex. Justification for Yugoslavia is ready. Are my troops in position? Enough of them are, yes. How about Ireland? Six. Well, that's not a lot. Let's wait with Ireland. Can still wait a week and a bit. Attack Yugoslavia and justify on Afghanistan. It'll give me better access here later on. Having a bit of hard time with supplies over here, but we're breaking through. Maybe we should have used a naval invasion. Oh, damn it. I messed up and uh, slept on the world declaration on Ireland. I'm gonna lose stability in war spot for that. That was a mistake. Let's do socialist emulation. Yeah, I messed up with Ireland. Hungary capitulates and we keep boosting our anti-air and artillery. I've been unable to automatically repeat the collaboration government. Why? Oh, they must have very good counterintelligence, so the network strength went down. We did 30%, so we have 60 in the United States. Just one more and then we kill them. There goes Latvia. And they have a fleet. Let's take it. Someone's justifying against me. Germany is justifying against me. Are you doing a focus? They're probably doing a focus, but that doesn't mean they're going to attack. I mean, they might, but not necessarily. Should I cancel my justification on Afghanistan? Yeah, if Germany is getting uppity, then I shall do so. That will delay my conquest of the United States. Can I do both? I think I can do both. You guys will handle the German border for me. Soviet volunteer group. Don't care. Almost done with Yugoslavia. Annex everything. Take their fleet. Now, Germany. What are you doing exactly? Not a normal justification, so they must be doing war with the USSR. I'm actually going to take out the United States. Their economy is going to help me a lot. I'm going to justify on Mexico City and send these guys over to the United States. The other armies I have should be able to withstand the 
Germans while I deal with this. I might be making a mistake, but I think I'm not. It's a risk, but it adds spice to life, doesn't it? Make sure the guys facing Germany are balanced. That should do it. And our navy, our beautiful, huge navy. Let's just use you to ensure we're not navally invaded anywhere. This should do it. There's enough of them to do this. It's gonna take you guys a while to get in position, isn't it? Just use naval transport. More propaganda. Leadership of Stalin. Mm, let's wait with another one. And, oh, Academy of Sciences are now cheaper. Sure. Estonian, Latvian, Lithuanian, Tajik, Polish, and all that. This will boost my research tremendously. Now, are the Germans going to attack me? I hope not. I am ready for their attack, but I hope it never comes. Now, how are the logistics? Okay-ish. Can I switch some more troops to the better template? I can. All right, let's do it then. Kind of messed up with Ireland, Afghanistan, and maybe I should have attacked the United States earlier. Because if Germany fights me now, we'll have to fight on two fronts, and that's never good. But we can proclaim that Stalin is a great commander. Better recovery rate. Yes, please. Also, more academies of science. You can get an officer core role. Do I have an infantry guy? Don't. I don't. I need an infantry guy. There you go. Mm, don't have the political power at the moment. And you can be a regrouping specialist. We already have a regrouping expert. So no. Winter expert. Sure. That will do for now. Are you in position yet? Not yet. And the next collaboration government operation is in progress. Italy declared war on Greece. And we can attack Mexico. I'll do that in a moment. Just need my guys to get in position. Better artillery, please. Yeah, all right. Attack Mexico. And the United States will probably join in. Oh, this needs a better port. How did I not notice that? Three levels of port should suffice. They enforce Monroe Doctrine. White peace or no white peace. No white peace, please. And we're at war with the United States, as intended. Which means I can do desperate measures again. And what else? Some more propaganda for the motherland. This should be relatively easy because it's 1940. They didn't have enough time to be strong enough yet. And we can use their cipher. Let's do that. Oh no, we're decrypted and then not decrypted anymore. They keep upping their encryption, don't they? We'll probably be doing the same. And so, justifying Guatemala just because we're not justifying anything. That's a bit of a waste. And half of you can be assigned there. Looks like Adolf has a war goal on me and has decided wisely not to use it, at least for now. I do have a lot of troops on his border, so I think that's why he's not attacking at the moment, which is part of my plan. I'm gonna need more manpower. Another Academy of Science, please. Excellent. Each of these is a 1% research boost, and it's all cumulative. Germany has cancelled non-aggression pact. There might be war soon. Now we've unlocked lessons of war, we'll have to wait for that. Still, it will be available. Let's do cohesion first for some more organization. Oh, apparently I can invite Greece to my faction and Germany has declared war. Hey Greece, wanna join Comintern? All right, how are we doing against the Germans? Do we want to try and attack? Do I have enough equipment to switch you to the good template? No, I don't. Well, I kinda do. They would have half the artillery. You know what? I will. I will switch you to the better template. Let's give them some time to receive the equipment. And then I might just activate this order. We're doing pretty well in the Netherlands, or what used to be them. Let's call in the Brits. Well, it looks like I'm not doing too well in the Pyrenees. <gasps> they took the poor from me. I have no supply. This is terrible. Yeah, I should have prepared ourselves myself better here. No supply connection from capital. Why? Oh, because it's a supply hub, not a port. Yeah, can you guys maybe stop your attack and just try to survive? They're gonna die, aren't they? Yeah. Although, there's one thing I could do. I could launch a naval invasion into my own territory with a harbor, which I don't have because I used them all. Right, make me a harbor. Yeah, this is terrible. It's just one army though, and we have lots of those. More anti-air, more artillery. Let's get one guy from here, separate him, send him over to the port, and I'll try to use them to save these guys with a naval invasion. Do I have naval superiority everywhere? Not everywhere, but it's looking good enough. Use the ciphers for the United States and Germany. You guys stay on the defense if you're doing fine. Come on, survive. Justification on Guatemala is ready. Let's declare that's gonna give me better access to Mexico. Man, I might as well keep justifying on people. How about Honduras? Yeah, attack over here. Maybe you'll manage. How's my pod building? I'll get that before I can send a floating harbor, probably. But we do have one. So, do the naval invasion, my guy, and save them. Sadly, I have to reorganize organize everything. We'll abandon the Mediterranean. Make sure we have supremacy here. It's a lot of fiddling, isn't it? I'll probably finish building the ports before that happens. More manpower. My attack in the Netherlands is doing fine. Is it time for you guys to attack? I think so. Don't be too hasty about it. Actually, be cautious about it. Halt and do it on cautious. Do we get naval superiority? We do. Did we finish building the ports? Not yet. So our naval invasion to save these guys is gonna bring them a floating harbor. Let's do rehabilitated military. Oh no, Bulgaria joins the Axis. That is terrible, actually. How many troops can can I send to Bulgaria? How about half of these guys? Just to keep them contained for now. We've landed and we got a floating harbor. See? This way, without having a port, we get supply... Oh no, I just finished the port. So it was unnecessary. Oh well, at least you guys will survive. How are we doing in the United States? 85 days until the operation is complete. How about their surrender threshold? Still far from it, so we can continue our advance. Yeah, I really did mess up. I should have ignored Trotsky and focused on collaboration governments in the United States right after we were done with Britain and their collaboration governments. And then we should have attacked the United States right after after Britain. Then 
we wouldn't have a problem with fighting two fronts. This is looking great though. Let's make sure to extend your coverage over to the Baltic so we don't get nasty naval invasions from here. Oh, we did get a nasty naval invasion because I forgot that Italy had islands here. Well, it's not technically a naval invasion, they just walked in from the islands. That's a bummer. But let's get... how many? 15. You guys can help defend that. Not too many. Just to slow them down. It's not that important. Also, the fact that we have a lot of borders with Germany all over the world is actually advantageous to us because uh, these territories do not contribute to surrender, but the Germans will likely have distributed their forces all over the world. Like here and here. Germans and the Italians. Right, we're almost done with the United States. I want them to only capitulate when the operation is complete. So I'm going to stop my order and switch these guys to cautious. Hold. Do not advance anymore. Just hold position. We have Washington and we have New York and that's enough. So we might just want to take care of New York. When the operation completes, I'll get all the territory. You can't get to Guatemala either. That's fine. A little more construction. The motherland calls. Sure, let's get some more manpower. I'm not sending a lot of troops here because this doesn't really matter. We just need to stop them from getting into our territory. Rather, our core territory. Oh, this is not looking too good, is it? Maybe we should have evacuated the armies. Let's activate them. You can push back. We managed in the Netherlands. We'll manage here. Charismatic, please. Infantry expert and infantry expert. Also, infantry expert. All right. Uh, in 43 days, the United States will surrender. And then we can move the whole strength of our army to the Germans, which we probably should have done from the start and delayed the United States invasion. Imro, we don't care. Logistics? Need more artillery and anti-air. The rest is acceptable. Justification on Honduras. Do we care? Yeah, sure. Let's tag them. And justify on El Salvador, since we're already doing that. Honduras joined Axis. That's fine. Oh, they're pushing me back in the Netherlands. Brazil joins Axis. Why? What have I ever done to Brazil? They just attacked me. Probably for the colonial possessions I stole earlier. Yeah, that makes sense. Adaptable army, please. Well, bummer. I didn't really want to fight Brazil. Yeah, well, I'll let them occupy this. 20 more days until the United States surrender. I should try harder to follow my own advice. Like, don't fight two wars simultaneously if you don't have to, like I'm doing now. United States, surrender. I'm just going to annex everything and be done with it. Now, that has freed up my entire army group. Well, not entire army group, because I still want to send some people to Mexico, but one army will suffice for that. And the remaining four are actually going to land over in what used to be the Netherlands and crush Germany. Also, I now have a lot of free spies. I'm going to relocate them all to Berlin and do a collab on Germany with my highest level spies. This way we'll make them capitulate faster. They did push back against me a bit, but I made a big mistake of fighting them and the United States simultaneously. Now my best army is coming back and they should crush the Germans, even if it takes them a little while. Original government of the United States. Um, not this time. No, thank you. I already own the territory and I'm getting all I need from it. Oh, I am pushing back from Spain. Good. Hmm. Should I use the navy I stole from the United States in the Baltic? No, the Baltic's fine. Let's send it to the Mediterranean. No accessible regions. Oh, right. You can't get through here. We'll reorganize no matter. How are the casualties? I'm pretty high, unfortunately. Let's keep attacking people in Central America because I don't really have anything better to do with my justification timer. And it's a waste if you're not justifying. Iceland declares neutrality. That's fine. How far are you guys? You're on your way. This is not perfect, but under control. Once the American army returns, we should crush Adolf. And we can invite Norway. You want to join Comiton? Sure. Come on in. Up to 682 factories. Oh, looks like my American army has landed because we're pushing from the Netherlands. Excellent. When I saw that Germany was justifying, I should have just uh, focused all my troops on beating the Germans quickly and left the United States for later. Socialist realism. Because now we're making easy progress and Adolf doesn't stand a chance now. Does he? More justifications ready? Sure. Keep attacking people. Soon my army will crush Mexico and then we can move into Central and then South America. Still need to get to Brazil, don't I? No, Sweden, I don't want your ball bearings. Just two doctrines remaining. Looking good. Might not even need the operation, but it is underway. If I cannot defeat Germany before it's done, then it will just hasten the process. Don't really care about collaboration itself, but about the surrender threshold. Liberation, in quotation marks, of Warsaw. Mexico capitulates. Continue your attacks, please. And you guys can focus on Guatemala now. Got almost all of France and getting close to Berlin. More justifications, more declarations. Next up, Panama. Make everyone aggressive. Let's finish them off. We're almost in Berlin. And, I mean, that will not be enough to capitulate them, I think, but taking Berlin is always cathartic, isn't it? Oh, come on, they reinforced it. Let's do Patriarch of all Russia. That's a good advisor. And actually, I don't need two armies here, do I? One would be sufficient. Yeah, let's send you over to Europe. I'm about to cut Germany into pieces. All of Berlin. 87% towards capitulation. And the collaboration government, 112 days. I think 
think I will get more victory points and capitulate them normally before the collaboration government finishes. That's fine. El Salvador capitulates. Keep going. Ah, the best guns are complete. Excellent. Activate the Italian cipher. Taking a Hamburg should be sufficient to make them capitulate. Oh, we will know soon. Or Munich. Oh, sorry, you already got that one. Strasbourg then. How about you focus on that? It's uh, quite clear that the Germany is about to die. Do I need more? Not really. Just a little bit. I could just wait 80 days until the collaboration government finishes, but I don't want to wait anymore. Attack Panama. Justify on Colombia. Since you know, I'm going that way anyway. Bulgaria capitulated. When did you join? I didn't even notice they joined the war. No matter, I did have an army prepared, so it's fine. Now we can make you a logistics wizard. Excellent. And he advanced to an army offense expert. Improvisation expert for you. Infantry and improvisation expert for you. Non-aggression pact with Japan. Um, no, thank you. Patriarch of Russia is done. What's next? Can't do lessons of war yet. Reorganization would cost us. Let's found the PCDI. And take Rome. Because it's undefended. Oh, it's defended now. Doesn't really matter. We'll crush them in time. Because it's time to kill Germany. 99% there. 100%. Germany capitulates. Finish what you're doing. And then go down to crush Italy. And end this war. Full of Rome. Oh, and I got the Pope. How many divisions does he have? As USSR take Rome. Mussolini is deposed. Will we get the civil war thingy or not? At this point it doesn't really matter. Because we're about to win anyway. Slovakia capitulates. Right, let's finish Italy off. And that will be it for dominating the world, won't it? Well, not really. There's still Japan. Yes, civil war in Italy, which immediately makes them capitulate. That should make it... Brazil became a major power. Really? Well, that's very annoying. Very, very annoying. Uh, I suppose I could do a naval invasion to speed things up a bit. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Take my navy. Gain naval supremacy in the six main sea regions of the Mediterranean. That's fine. The war is over, essentially. I just need to kill Brazil. Let's put these guys into ports so they can quickly reinforce. Keep doing propaganda. Can they really increase their independence? Let's test that. Let's not do anything. If they want to increase their independence, we'll let them. I don't think the game allows that. You guys ready to invade Brazil? You are. Go. It was not a good choice to attack me in Brazil. Send my spies to Japan, because they're the last great power from the start of the game that I need to defeat. Panama capitulates. Colombia was supposed to be next. So there we go. Nuclear war in Colombia. Justify on Venezuela. And we have landed in Brazil. Connect yourselves. Give me the ports. Get the important territories. And I will send you reinforcements way more than necessary. Go. Crush the Brazilian. The Russian government against the Germans actually concluded, even though they're already capitulated. Interesting. Let's get you guys over here. Brazil about to capitulate? Not yet, no. Need way more. Run along the coast, please. Give me all their victory points. I think most of their victory points are coastal. We'll get them soon enough. Colombia being taken care of. And here come the unnecessary huge reinforcements against Brazil. Means to wage war. Colombia capitulates? Get ready to kill Venezuela. We could try and get into Brazil through here, but it's uh, really difficult resource-wise. Supply is terrible there. You guys can go along the coast. Get me all the victory points there. New justification, new declaration. I'm not gonna justify anything else here. This is enough. Then again, I am already here. Sure, let's keep going. Why not Uruguay? Someone's justifying against me. Really, Japan is justifying against me. Well, good luck with that. I intend to kill them anyway, so that's fine. Some more victory points. Oh, well, Brazil surrender already. Ah, oh, there's a victory point. Take it. Well, that suffice. It should. And it does. All right, that's the end of the war. We have all the score, so we take all the stuff. Hmm. Actually, I can feed Italy to my Italian puppet that I got. Please, these bits. The rest just goes straight to me. Italian state of East Africa. Oh, and it's a separate country. That's fine too. Everything's mine. Gimme. Oh, and the fleet too. Okay, done. And Japan declared war on me. Ha! Huh. I didn't actually expect them to do that, but we're ready. I still want to kill Uruguay. I suppose I can leave one army there. All right, so if Japan wants to attack me, I'm fine with that. Just send my field marshal over to take care of them. And prepare some naval invasions. Do we have a good spot to invade from? Yes, the Philippines. You guys, get to the Philippines. One army group handles continental stuff, one goes to the Philippines. We'll take them well, but we're vast. Even if they get to here, we won't really be in any danger. Also, 1,096 factories. Well, Vladivostok, yeah, that's temporary. Let's get all our fleets together. Everybody, get over to the Philippines. We can now do lessons of war. My troops are arriving at the Japanese border. Wouldn't it be better to go around Africa navally than to go through all the territory? Uh, Uruguay, sure. Annex. Lessons of war done. Excellent. Let's do smash. Some more war support, please. And war bonds. More spies in Japan. Are you good to go? Are you in position? You are not in position. We only have three percent participation. China's gonna get all of this, isn't it? We are the superpower of the world anyway. Looks like we're good to go with the naval invasion. Let's get the navy. There we go. Don't repair. Only engage if you have the upper hand. We should have naval superiority quite easily. Out of naval range, really? Hmm, that's strange. When I retake Vladivostok, that will change, so I'm okay with it. Eventually, the invasions will launch, and Japan will be taken care of. My spies are getting 
can easily capture them in Japan. Perhaps because they're white and they're in Japan. Barrier troops? Why are you not attacking? I'm going to need some more supply for my guys here. Have some ports. Naval range is a bit of an issue, but I guess we can just eliminate their forces. We start fighting the Japanese fleet. Mine's much bigger, so maybe we should be on strike force. Oh, just switching to strike force gave me uh, supremacy everywhere. Okay then, we're launching. And we're landing. Get me the ports. So we can land reinforcements. Nagasaki is mine. Good. Here comes a reinforcing army. We landed around Osaka, but Osaka is not ours yet. Another port has successfully been captured. Did you get Osaka? No, we're getting eliminated here. No matter. We'll attack from the north and the south then. Really, just one would be sufficient. Just get in there quickly. Oh, we can do Father of Nations. Yes, sure. Why not? Joseph, the Father of Nations. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you guys not guarding the port? Just stay here. The port is the most important. Reinforcements already. A landing in Nagasaki and crushing resistance. Come on, commence your invasion northwards. Oh, I don't have the Japanese cipher. I must have forgotten. And landing. Japan is much like the United Kingdom. They have a powerful fleet defending their island, but once you land, they're pretty much done for. Although Japan is better at defending uh, their territory than Britain is. Probably because Britain has a lot more territory to spread troops around. Can I do more academies of science? No, but I can do more propaganda stuff. Or the motherland. The motherland calls. The enemy is treacherous. Sure, let's do that one. And we're nearing Kyoto and Tokyo. Siam has joined the Japanese faction. Will they join the war? Probably not. It would be very silly of them. Of Tokyo. There it goes. And there goes Japan. Now China has the majority war score, sadly. You can still take a bit. It's not really that important. Make sure to take at least one ship so we get all the small ones too. We'll pass a few times, let China take the rest and make sure the country doesn't survive. Now, some more ships. All right, that does it. Well, we have now eliminated all the great powers from the start of the game. Now, this China, who's probably a great power by now. Let's have a look. We'll be here, diplomacy, major countries. Chile, China, Norway, Siam and Sweden. Well, that's mostly because lack of other big countries. China is the only possible obstacle, but let's be realistic. I have 1,262 factories. They have 100 factories, 104. You have a lot of manpower, but they don't have guns or artillery for them. So if we fought China, we would crush them easily. So um, I think I'll conclude this here. We have dominated the world. I did make a big mistake by fighting the United States and Germany at the same time. We should have either gone after the United States right after UK, regardless of the collaboration government, or when I saw that Germany is doing the focus to fight me, uh, abandoned the attack on the United States and just fought Germany first and then the United States. So that's one mistake I made. Other than that, I do like uh, the opener where you take the Netherlands, Turkey and Romania and taking out the allies before fighting Germany is usually the right choice in my opinion. That's about it really. Let me know how you liked it and um, if you have any good ideas for the next video. I'm hoping to speed up my releases and post videos more frequently from now on. So um, yeah, hopefully I will see you again soon. Goodbye.